Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at diesel electric submarines. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with diesel electric submarines, uh, they're basically going to be submarines that are going to be primarily moving themselves through the water using an electric motor that is occasionally going to be charged by a diesel. Now in the old days you actually had submarines where you could drive the entire submarine directly by the diesel motor, but depending on what generation you're dealing with, you're going to have some different options as far as that goes. The key thing with the diesel electric submarine is you're dealing with something that's going to have a relatively short range. It's going to have a relatively, um, what's the best way? It's going to be a lot quieter. And of course, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to kind of operate tactically. Now, you're probably saying, why would anybody bother with these uh, diesel electric submarines in today's day and age? And the reason is the fact that they're relatively cheap and they're actually really, 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 really quiet. So what I have here is I have a group of diesel electric submarines. So we have the Gulag Guppy here, we have Red Oktoberfest here, and of course we have Das Bootylicious, which is actually a German sub, which we'll be using a little bit later on. Now, right now I've got these guys cruising, basically making steerage at about three knots. Uh, the current depth of my Gulag Guppy right here, as you can see, is a relatively low. Uh, he's uh, chilling at 131 feet. That's basically the shallow depth setting. Now, if I come over to this one here, Red Oktoberfest, if I order him up to periscope depth, uh, he's going to start making a little bit of a climb here. And what you're going to suddenly observe is, as he starts getting a little bit closer to the surface, is he's going to suddenly start making a lot more noise. It's not to say that because you're shallow, you're making noise. It's because once he gets up to the proper depth, he can actually start using a snorkel. Now, what a snorkel does is it allows air from outside to get into that yummy diesel engine that's actually going to give it the ability to uh, run itself. Now, if you take a look here, you can see this guy up top. He's running at 15 decibels. We can see for the same exact speed down here, we're running at 16.7 decibels. The reason this is so much louder is because now we're starting to run the diesels for the purposes of keeping our batteries charged. Now, you're saying, oh, well, that's good to know, I guess. Now, if I go back up to the Agulog Guppy here, you're probably going to observe the fact that I've got four days and 20 hours at this speed. That's pretty good. These are not World War I subs that, you know, you could measure this in minutes. This guy down here on the other hand, Red Oktoberfest, has got himself a one month and one week of endurance at this speed. So if you really want to think about it, those diesels, uh, when you can run those, you get some really, really, really significant range if that's what you want to do. Of course, the downside is if we're sitting up here at the surface, this is going to make us a very, very obvious target for anybody looking around. So that's a, kind of one of those downsides. Again, trade-offs as they like to say. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and order these guys to make a little bit quicker speed here. I'm going to bring them up to full. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to bring them up to full as well. I'm going to leave uh, Das Bootylicious alone for now. Now, you'll notice a big discrepancy here between the two speeds. Uh, one, you'll see they both got significantly louder. You can see we're doing at 47 for this guy who's completely submerged. This guy down here, you can see he's, uh, he's making a lot of noise. He's about 63 decibels, which is fairly substantial. That is definitely not nuke substantial, but that's uh, pretty loud. If we actually switch back really quickly to Orange Team here, um, I think our Depth Charge Dynamo has not detected them yet, which is, it's okay. Obviously, um, you, know, you have to be able to hear these things. And diesel electrics are very quiet subs. Now, the interesting thing here is look what happens to the range. Our Gulag Guppy right here is uh, now running at 4 hours and 39 minutes of range, 46 nautical miles. And uh, Red Oktoberfest, of course, has uh, still got two weeks and four days worth of power because he's running those diesels to keep the electrics going. Now, if I do something really dumb and order these guys up to flank speed, let's kick them all the way here, uh, unpause real quick, you will see that uh, they accelerate you know, moderately. They're not fast by any means. This guy down here, my underwater guy, is up to 12 knots. He's doing 88. Now he's, uh, he's making a lot of noise here. And this guy down here, even though I've ordered up flank speed, you're probably observing the fact he's not making any more noise. And you're sitting there going, Wait, why? It's because he has mass extended. He's sticking things out of the water right now. He can't run faster than 10 knots. Otherwise, it's going to cause him all sorts of interesting problems, mostly bent masts. Also, of course, you create cavitation, all that other nasty stuff. Plus, you run into the problem where you can't run, charge your other engines. It's, it gets messy. It gets messy. But you'll observe here at flight speed, I'm doing almost 20 knots on electrics, which gives me a one hour and 21 minutes or 25 nautical miles before my batteries are totally toast. That's not a lot of time. So it's a, one of those downsides of electrics you have to always keep in mind. Now, some people, of course, say, well, let's go ahead and I'll slow this guy back down. Let's actually order him to go to a stop. I'm going to grab a Red Oktoberfest and also order him to a stop. Now, things get kind of interesting here. Um, obviously, whereas we're not moving, making as much noise, shooting through the water, the sound that the actual submarines are going to be making is going to come down substantially. Now, if you look up here, you can see he's still about 17 decibels. Remember, he's coasting to a stop here. He's still doing 13 knots, which is that's impressive. That is moving wick underwater for an electric sub. Whereas Red Oktoberfest, remember, he's uh, poking all his stuff out of the top here, is gradually slowing down. He's got about 6.84 there. Like I said, not dropping down to nothing. Let me go speed up time a little bit here. 
and then you'll be able to see the magic start to happen. Now, this is where things get interesting, and actually, um, one of those settings that someday we'll get in command. Now, if you'll notice, uh, Red Oktoberfest has uh, dropped himself down to about zero knots here, full stop. A couple things you want to observe. Uh, the first thing is, he's not running his diesels at all. Uh, he's just sitting here. Uh, there's no electrical charge going on, which is actually kind of interesting because you almost think there's a right-click charge diesels kind of an option here. Um, that means when we're not moving, we're not charging. So if we're just sitting here, um, we're not only making no noise, but we're actually not improving our situation electrically. As a matter of fact, oh, I take it back. Uh, we're definitely charging. I can't see. So we're actually running our diesels right now, but we're running them so quietly. Sorry, I misspoke. So darn quietly, we're not even showing up acoustically, which is incredible. Now, our other buddy up here, uh, just sort of chilling, the Gula Guppy, if I just fast forward time real quickly, you'll see the fact that he's burning no diesel, he's burning no battery, because, you know, you can burn battery, and it's just making no noise whatsoever, which means if I had some kind of surface vessel that was, for example, looking around for him, let's go run over to Orange real fast, get over here, buddy, I need you for something, oh, depth charge dynamo. Uh, move. Boop. I'm going to put the depth charge dynamo right here. Now, keep in mind, my submarine is, uh, let's see here, uh, it's about 20 feet away from the uh, sh uh, ship itself. Let's go shut off uh, God's eye view. If I speed up time, you'll notice that the depth charge dynamo has no idea in the universe that there's a submarine sitting right underneath it. Now, people say, is it truly no noise, or is this just a coincidence? No, it's literally no noise. So if I were to actually come in here and press F1 real fast, if I got a Sea Wolf, because the Sea Wolf is a great example of a very quiet sub, you'll notice at idle, he's making 10 decibels here, and he has to make 10 decibels at idle because he's a nuclear reactor, and he doesn't want to overheat and melt into the ocean. Now, my depth charge dynamo, believe it or not, once I get into position, had no difficulty in the universe locating my nuke, but he's clueless that there's literally... Look, it's just sitting right there. And you can just get a good idea of just how quiet these subs are. Now, that's one of those sort of interesting things that we have here. So let's go ahead and I'll leave that guy alone for now. It's fine. Let's go get rid of my sea wolf here. He's done a really, really nice job demonstrating. Now, of course, the joke here is, um, yeah, we can have the world's best shot on this guy as he basically passes over the top of him within a few feet. Now, if I just so much as clicked on a single knot of speed, I would be detected instantaneously. So that gives you an idea of just how absurdly stealthy these subs really are if you can get them into position. Uh, one of the classic things I always like to think about electrics is their ambush subs. It's all about getting them where they need to go early and just leaving them there until the target gets into a range where you can actually go ahead and engage it. Now we have our two subs here. This guy's right now, he's just charging up. Uh, he's not making any noise as he's charging because he's probably running those things as low as he can. And he's just slowly regenerating that battery. And you can see he's actually chilling at full battery now. Let's see here. Is he uh, stop burning diesel? Yeah, he stopped burning diesel. So he's just kind of sitting here at idle. Now, one of the things you probably noticed uh, when I set up my scenario here, other than kind of showing you the differences between the two. By the way, when you do have your periscope up um, or you have your snorkel up, you're detectable on radar. So that's just one of those things you got to kind of keep in mind too. Again, trade-offs, everyone is I brought this guy out. And um, this little guy over here, this is a Type 212 submarine. Now, if you come over here on the right, you probably observe there are actually three different fuel sources here. You have diesel, you have battery, and you have something that says AIP. AIP is Air Independent Propulsion. Now, the reason this is so fascinating is this sub has the ability to both run off a of battery as well as this lovely AIP stuff. Now, the AIP is a very, very unique power source because it is uh, not anything we can recharge. We have to go basically head back to port and they got to fill us back up for it. And there's a lot of different air independent propulsion systems. Now where this gets interesting here is if I actually open this up real quick, you'll notice we have three pages or three major tables of different consumption. You can see very quickly here that under my regular, this let's see here, we have the AIP motor. We get a top speed of 20 knots, which is pretty good. Our electric motor's top speed 20 knots. And you can see all the performance details sort of broken down. Now, it says battery units per minute. It's, it's fuel units per minute. It's not. Again, AIP, there's a bunch of different ways to do AIP and a bunch of different chemical compounds they actually use for it. Now, the people, of course, say, um, well, how do we use AIP? This sounds like something that could be really, really useful. Could you show us what to do? Sure, I'll show you what to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick up a speed a little bit here. I'm going to bring him up to full because I want to run his battery down. Now, scenario editors, of course, always say, hey, is there a way that I can edit, you know, uh, what this guy's up to here? Uh, I can say, sure, just right click and come down to scenario editor real quick. And there's this edit unit properties and there's a unit properties button. So one of the things you can do is you can actually come in here and you can set the battery. So if I want a 4,800 battery, for example, and just press that, what it's going to do is it's going to reset his battery all the way down to 4,800. 
Now that's a really, really quick and easy way to demonstrate how fast I can burn my battery down here. And again, you can see I got about three hours endurance. <laughs> I drive an electric car. This is, this is a familiar number to me. So we're just cruising along uh, doing 15 knots here, but notice how much noise we're making. Now we're making a 69 decibels worth of noise and we're chewing through that battery fast. So what I wanna do is I wanna enable my air independent propulsion. Now you notice if I right click on him and uh, look through my options here, it doesn't seem to be, I can replenish, oh, where's the button? What am I gonna do? The button, the button. So it turns out air independent propulsion, uh, try that one again, AIP, air independent propulsion, is actually a setting that is going to be located inside of your doctrine. So I'm gonna press control shift F9, pop this sucker up, and you're gonna see all of our doctrine options. Now, when you come down here to where it says ASW, you're gonna notice there's actually a lot of stuff down here that deals with recharging batteries automatically. Uh, one of them that you're actually gonna see here is recharge battery during transit. So if my battery hits 60, that means automatically come up to periscope depth and charge. Recharge battery on offense or defense, only do that when you have 10% of your battery. You can change these two settings here. Ah, air independent propulsion usage. Yes, when engaged offensive or engaged defensive, or if you're one of these people, you can come down here and flip this to the always setting. Now, the nice thing about this now is we're going to automatically switch over from battery over to AIP. Now, of course, we're chewing through our battery pretty quick here. Ah, there it goes. So now you'll notice that we're actually running off our AIP. You're probably saying, well, why is our battery still coming down? I thought you said we're running off AIP. We are. Keep in mind what speed we're currently operating at. So we're making a 15 knots, which is massive amount of electricity that we're currently using. So even though we have our AIP, it's not going down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a cruise speed here, which is uh, going to slow down quite significantly. And you can see that the ratio of what we're using here is going to slowly adjust as we start to come down to those specific speeds. Now, what you'll see now is I'm doing about 36 decibels here, and I'm running uh, pretty equally off a of battery as well as AIP. Now, if I drop all the way down to creep, I'll let that slow down pretty dramatically here. You can see that we're running primarily on AIP and not really draining the battery at all because I have the ability to basically beat the uh, charge usage. You know, one of the things I really wish that we had here was an actual consumption thing. This is, you know, seven per minute or eight per minute or plus seven, like in you know, a little arrow or something like that. But this is a great way to go ahead and see how that works directly. Now, if I speed up time here and just let him kind of cruise around, you can see he's completely running off the AIP and our battery is basically not supplementing everything. So these are not, you know, kind of catch-all systems. Now, the interesting thing here is uh, we'll go ahead and show you, if you take a look now, I'm running at 18.4 decibels. Now, if I bring this back up here and let's go ahead and shut AIP off, close that off. I'll give it a few moments to kind of recognize what's going on here. And you'll observe it made no change to the amount of noise that I was making down here. You can see he's still happily kind of chugging along without too much difficulty. Now, if I order him to come to a complete stop, you'll see just like the other diesel electric subs, he basically slows right on down and uh, stops making his noise. Notice we're not producing any electricity here. So whereas with the other subs, if I wanted to uh, run the diesels, I could come up to snorkel depth and fire them on. So if I were to come up here and say, uh, go ahead and uh, always use AIP kind of a thing, go ahead and run the meter real quickly here, I'm gonna grab the actual unit. You'll notice it's burning AIP to regenerate battery underwater. That is a, one of the big differences and one of the great advantages if you're willing to uh, you know, basically burn that stuff off in a hurry. Now, a lot of scenarios, of course, you don't start with this much stuff ready to go. You know, it's quite a process. But keep in mind now that I can recharge my battery underwater as long as I have some of this stuff kind of sitting around. Now, there's not a lot of subs that have this capability. You know, this is a, not that it's a new capability, it actually goes back quite a bit. But this uh, submarine technology really changes the way you can use them because now that I'm underwater, I'm not detectable by an MPA. So I'm gonna grab a Red Oktoberfest again real quickly here. Uh, he's actually looking pretty good. Notice by the way, he dove automatically. I did not tell him to do that. He did that himself because he was ordered to do so. You can see that automatically do this. I'm just gonna say no, because I want him to come up to periscope depth because he's gonna demonstrate something important for me here. So as he's uh, coming up to periscope depth, let's get rid of the depth charge dynamo. I'll go ahead and grab something else here. Grab myself an aircraft, the correct aircraft for this, of course. Uh, let's see here. We -do 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 uh, da -da -da. That's the one I want you yeah, well, I'm close enough. I'm just gonna use that one. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, which one do we want today? Uh, apparently the Russian Navy is running out of these. There we go, maritime surveillance, that works fine for me. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, flip on that sensor real fast. <laughs> it does have pretty good range, as you no doubt observed. So uh, let's go ahead and press Control-V here. Did you get up to depth here? Uh, yeah, he's pretty high, but he's uh, pretty pretty concealed. Uh, that kind of surprises me, actually. I might have to switch to a P8 here. Oh, well, we need something that's got a little bit uh, more sensitive of a radar here. 
Scribe that one, yes, because a long-range anti-ship missile is the correct solution to this problem. All right, let's go flip onto sensors one more time. Let's see, sensors on. I think this one's pretty good. I'll go put him over here. Get over there. All right, let's see if we can pick up the uh, periscope. Eh, I think you might have too much angle on it to actually pick up the periscope. Remember, when you're looking down into the water, that's not the same thing as looking across the water. So if I actually grab, uh, now I'm just grabbing aircraft to try to see if I can find one that's going to do the deed for me here. But um, when you look down at first periscopes, it's a lot harder than basically looking um, across for periscopes. And it's just kind of one of those things. All right, let's go grab this guy and see if he's going to demonstrate my point. Again, they're really, really, really small masts, so they're not going to be doing too much trouble here. All right, they're pinging away, having a happy time. Let's go take a look at this guy again. You did come up to depth. You did. Good for you. All right, let's get you creeping just a little bit. Keep in mind, if you are trying to detect a periscope, uh, one of the easiest and dumbest things you can do as a submariner is move quickly, because remember, that could see a Doppler shift, which makes you much more easy to detect. All right, he's cruising. Ah, just can't get close enough to get that periscope hit. But as you can see, the diesel-electric submarines are interesting little beasts indeed. Um, now, from a combat perspective, people are like, uh, can you use them for, like, actually killing things? Yeah, but the key thing with them, and this would probably be another video, is you got to remember these are ambush things. They're very, very, very good at not being there and then suddenly appearing. Remember, I can't pick this thing up unless it's moving, or, of course, I use active sonar. But uh, using active sonar has its own consequences because, obviously, that's going to make you a lot more detectable. Enjoy.